Okay, this is a little bit of bonus coverage on Chapter 9 for net ionic equations. I, this is probably most useful in Chem 115, but we'll go with it. Chem 110b, we're talking about the ABC method with net ionic equations. I'll just jump right into it. What this will help you most with is those really hard problems on 9b, the, the, the last couple. All right, your first job is to exchange ionic partners to find the predicted products, all of them. You'll see how we do it as we go. Then, number two, you apply the ABCs to every compound. A means acid. You decide, is the compound an acid? Yes or no. If it is, is it strong or weak? Yes or no. If it's strong, it splits apart into ions. That's what all strong acids do. If it's weak, then it stays together as a molecule. That's what weak acids do. Okay, so if you decide that the compound isn't an acid, is it a base? If it's a base, is it a strong or a weak base? This is where knowing your strong acids helps and knowing your strong bases helps. If it's a strong base, it splits apart into the individual ions, right? And if it's a weak base, you say that it stays undissociated, stays basically all together. If it's not an acid and it's not a base, the ABCs are a decision tree. And if it's not an acid and it's not a base, then C means covalent. If it's covalent and you say, yeah, I know that's a covalent compound, yes, that means it stays together. That's what covalent compounds do. So if it's not an acid, and it's not a base, and it's not covalent, then it must be ionic. And if it's ionic, the S has to do with soluble or insoluble. And that's about knowing those solubility rules. If it's soluble, that means it splits up into ions. Right? And if it's insoluble, it stays together as a solid all together. Okay. After you do all of that, you go back through and you eliminate the spectator ions that are exactly the same on both sides, and then you make sure you're balanced for charge and for atoms. That's it. So let's go through a couple of uh, examples that are tough from 9b, like sort of 5 or 6, all the way through 11. Here's the first one. This is 9b number 7. A solution of HCl is added to solid CuOH2. This is really all you're going to get in Chem 15, and this is all you need to be able to do this problem, because you know that H would split out into H plus and Cl minus. And Cu has to be a plus 2 if OH is a minus 1 and there's two of them. That's just knowing your polyatomics. Okay, so if that's one beaker and that's the other beaker, HCl plus CuOH2, the H plus would go with the OH minus and the Cu plus 2 would go with the Cl. That's the um, 9C solubility rules kinds of problems that we were doing. That would make CuCl2 and HOH or H2O. Okay. So those are the predicted products. All right. Now let's go back and apply the ABCs. Is this an acid? Yes. It's a strong acid, right? So you write it as H plus plus Cl minus, split up. Is that an acid? No. Is it a base? No. That is not one of the strong bases. It's not the weak base. And it's not covalent, so it's ionic. Is it soluble or insoluble? It's insoluble. based on rule 5 of the solubility rule, which means you would write it as the solid. Keep going. Is that an acid? No. Is that a base? No. Is that covalent? 
So, so it's our, is this soluble or insoluble? This is soluble by rule three. Remember, rule three says chloride, bromide, and iodide are soluble unless it's silver, mercury, or lead. That's neither one of those. So if it's soluble, write it as copper plus two aqueous plus Cl minus one aqueous. Is that an acid? Well, if you say it is, then it would definitely be a weak acid. Okay. Or you could also say it's covalent. Either way, you write it as H2O liquid altogether. You don't split it up. Okay, so what stays exactly the same on both sides? There's the spectator eye. You eliminate that. You write what's left. H plus 1 reacts with the copper hydroxide precipitate. It dissolves. a little bit more water. And now you have to try to get things balanced. If there's one of those, and there's one of those, two of those, and two of those. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one and one, plus two on this side, plus two on that side. That's the net ionic equation. The ABCs allows you to go through pretty quickly. Let's try that one. HNO3 plus FES. Okay, split them up into their individual ions. switch partners. That's plus with that minus, this plus with that minus. Okay, so what would that make? That would make H2S plus Fe and then 3, 2. Right? That cation plus that ion makes that. That cation plus that ion makes that. Alright, so these are the reactants. These are the predicted products. Now let's go and see if we can apply the ABCs. Is that an acid? Yes, it's a strong acid. So that means it splits up 100%. Is that an acid? No. Is it a base? No. Is it covalent? No. Right? You've got an iron, which is a metal, plus S is a non-metal. So therefore, that's ionic. And is it soluble or insoluble? That sucker is not soluble based on rule 5. You better know those rules. All sulfides make precipitates. Unless rule one, two, three, or four applies. So that's a solid. Right, let's keep going. H2S. Is that an acid? Sure. It starts with H. Is it strong or weak? Acid? Yes. Weak. What do we do with weak acids? We write them as all together. Okay? You write it as all together. You don't have to know that that's a gas. It is. But you don't have to know that. It also could be covalent. But the idea is, is that you have to write that all together. And then what about that guy? Well, you should know a nitrate salt. That's a soluble ionic. Which means you write it as the separate ions. Plus 2 plus NO3 minus 1. This time it's the nitrate ion that cancels out. Mm. 
Almost all done, right? Just two of these. That's it. Okay, one more to go here. HF splits up into H plus 1 and F minus 1. KOH splits up into K plus 1 and OH minus 1. Good. The H's and the OH's and the K's and the F's we combine. The K plus 1 and the F minus 1 is KF. The H plus 1 and the OH minus 1 is H2O. So those are the predicted products. HF plus KOH goes to KF plus H2O. Now let's apply our ABCs. A, is that an acid? Yes it is. Strong or weak? Nah, that guy is a weak acid. So HF altogether. Then acid? No. Is that a base? Yes. Strong or weak? This time it's a strong base. So what do we do with strong bases? Split them up. Because you know that's what strong bases do. What's that? That's a rule one soluble ionic. So that means K plus 1, F minus 1. And we already decided that water is covalent or a weak acid. And either way, we write that as H2O. Once again, there's only one spectator ion. What's left? HF plus OH minus 1 goes to F minus 1 plus H2O. That is absolutely balanced. And let me tell you something. This is so important in Chem 115 and in Chem 116. It's a major deal. You really need to be good at this. You can get away with not knowing the ABC's methods in uh, uh, Chem 110, but this will be helpful for you down the road. Okay. Apply these to those later problems in, in exercise 9b and maybe that will help. I promise I won't give you one of those tough ones on an exam anyway. Alright, good luck.